Hello and welcome to the Brule and Care Pit Lane. I'm here today with sound and vibration engineer Eric Seeler and we're going to show you some of the NVH systems that we can use for measuring sound and vibration on a Supercart 250. So Eric, tell us about the 250 Supercart. Well, as you say, the 250 means that it has a 250cc engine uh, with 57 horsepower. It's got a sequential gearbox with the uh, six gears in. It uh, transforms the power from the engine through a standard motorcycle chain to a stiff rear axle and it has absolutely no suspension. You said motorcycle chain, 250cc engine, how fast can it go then? It goes from zero to 100 kilometers an hour with Formula One performance in 2.5 seconds. 2.5 seconds. 2.5 seconds, yeah. That's very fast. What it about is. if you have to stop suddenly? If you have to stop suddenly, then you push the brake. We have four disc brakes on this little thing, and it will stop in 1.8 seconds if you are a skilled driver. Now, you said there was no suspension. How do we set the car up to make sure that it's a fairly safe ride for the driver? He's sitting in a seat that is... Uh, fitting his body very tight uh, and he is hanging on to the steering wheel uh, and that's what you have. There are no seat belts, he just has to hang in there. So the ride is very rough. How do you make sure the car doesn't shake itself to bits? The first part of the design is to make sure that you have the right stiffness and flexibility in the frame of the car. And when we first got the supercar, that was the first thing we did, was to take all the different parts off, leaving us with just the frame. On that frame, we did what is called a hammer test, where we, with a modal hammer and an accelerometer moving around, recorded the response of the frame. This way we can do a structural analysis of the frame of the cart. And I will now show you the results of that measurement. Okay. So based on the measurements that we recorded on the frame, we took those measurement results into pulse reflex and did a complete modal analysis uh, of the frame. And I will now show you the results of the first measurement. This is called the first bending mode and uh, we can notice that it is uh, appearing at a frequency uh, around 31 hertz. We see the second and you notice that the, the animation is showing you that it is the first torsional mode that we are seeing here. You can sort of see that the whole frame is bending. Now I'd like to demonstrate that in a real life example using a shaker uh, underneath the supercar. What is it we're seeing now, Eric? We are seeing a swift sign from the shaker exciting the car and when the frequency is going down we will hit the first bending mode and we are Getting close to that now, where you will see the whole cart wobbling from the front to the back. She starts out at the front now. You look at the middle, you see the center of the cart going up and down now. And we have passed the point. So Eric, we've just seen the car excited for structure and analysis tests using accelerometers to gather the data. But there is another NVH discipline, squeak and rattle, using microphones to gather the data. Can we do the same sign sweep test again using an array to capture the signals? Yes, of course.
The 18 channel beam forming array is doing real time measurements and in the center of the array we can see the camera that's taking real time pictures. From the array the 18 channels go down into the Lenox I front end which is battery powered. It sends its signal up to the Pulse software doing the real time beam forming. And another way, a more manual way you may, might say, uh, to do noise source location is to use a sound level meter and a sound intensity probe. And with the 3270, you can take a picture and underlay it to your structure so you can get the same features as you have just shown with the array. Now the sound intensity array doing real time beam forming, 18 channels, very powerful, but obviously not something we can drag along in the car when it's moving. So to solve this, we can instrument the car using one of these. A Lennox I portable front end, six channels, four channels of audio data, two channels of accelerometer data, and a battery. Put this in the car, and the driver can take it out for a spin, and we can do the measurements in real time, live. Have you actually used that on the racetrack? Not me personally. Our driver here has both. Can we take a look at the data you measured? Absolutely. Julian, I can feel that the car is sort of moving a little bit and it sounds like it's driving. What is it doing now? See, what it's doing is simulating a real racetrack. What we did, we took this Lanax I front end and we mounted an accelerometer at the back of the car at the same point that it's being excited at now and used this when it was racing around the track to record the signal from that single accelerometer. We're now replaying that signal back through the vehicle, through the shaker, and so it's doing exactly the same bumps and vibrations as it did on the racetrack. So that works actually as a simulated operational model? Absolutely. We're also using the last channel here for the tachometer. So when we're doing our analysis, we know exactly what the engine was doing at the time. So the tachometer is what you mounted on the engine here? Yes, we did. Deep here, inside the gubbins. Right, Julian, now that we're playing the track from the race, we are also doing a simulated operational modal analysis. We are recording the signals on the Lanex I front end. The signals coming from 16 accelerometers on the card. And the actual recording is done by the operational modal system on this computer. Then we can adjust our original structural model with the this recording. So we've done a structural test on the chassis, tighten it up so the bending moments are correct. We've done squeak and rattle tests to make sure it's not rattling too much. Should we do a durability test before we put it out on the track? Yeah, let's see what it can take. Now the durability test is sending random signals into the go car. We are taking this random vibration at a 25% level. Then we are slowly increasing it to 100% level and it will be so noisy that I will shut up now and just let you listen. Yeah, Julian, look at it go. This is just 1G. So I think we better turn it off before we break it. So should we uh, take it uh, for a spin on the racetrack? Are you going to drive it? Not to 100 in 2.5 seconds? No way. Are you? No, I am not. Should we get him to do it? Let's get him to do it. 